there's a guy named Conor McGregor with just two fights left on his contract. And I think, you guys tell me if you think I'm crazy, the biggest fight to be made in combat sports right now, whether people like it or hate it, I mean, I think Conor versus Jake Paul does well over 2 million buys. Happy Friday. It's the Zone Boxing Show. I go by the name of Buck. And I'm Barack the Boxing Bully. Hey, Bully, we're going to have our guy, Ariel Hawani, host of the MMA Hour. We're going to talk a little UFC, a little Dana White, Jake Paul. Speaking of Dana White and Jake Paul, they're still in the news. We're going to throw some Tommy Fury stuff in there. It's time for the opening bell. Another day, another set of headlines when it comes to everyone's favorite problem child, Jake Paul. We all saw all these guys trade shots on social media early in the week. That's Dana White and Jake Paul. Dana claiming that Jake wasn't playing for it. Well, Sun Sport has learned that both Paul and Woodley produced negative results for all prohibited substances for their last fight last month. So much for that. In other Jake news, Tommy Fury still wants to smoke against the problem, child. We'll see if that happens. And to top it all off, Jake was also named Breakout Boxer of the Year by Sports Illustrated. Barack, a lot of people are not happy about that. I'm not upset with it. How do you feel about Jake being announced Breakout Fighter of the Year? Damn, he didn't fight a boxer. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. And then he fought the same guy he already beat. So how, how is that a breakout? Because you knocked him out? Hmm. That's, that's a tough one. That's, no, I mean, that's not a tough one. I, I wouldn't have voted for, for him for that. Now, knockout of the year, that knockout was spectacular. But breakout of the year, and you have these these rising stars in the sport of boxing, you know, nah, I think that's a stretch. All right, now, what about this battle with him and Dana White? Look, Dana came back with some hard shots, but mm -hmm. look, right now, if they were done with the Twitter fingers, I, it's easy, it, it would be safe to say that Jake won the fight. It depends on who's judging. Uh, if the fans are judging or, or if the MMA community is judging, who knows? I don't even know if the MMA community really takes Jake uh, seriously, you know, because, you know, you, you really bring it, trying to bring awareness maybe to, to the, um, the low pay, but then um, I really want to knock you guys out, you know, so I don't think they really take him seriously. But if you're talking about fans, how can you beat Jake Paul? That, that's his game. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's his game. I mean, when he when I seen him do gotcha hat and he get tattooed gotcha hat to on his leg because of Floyd Mayweather, you knew, I was you like, knew he's that unbeatable. Nobody could outshow this dude. <laughs> he's unbeatable <laughs> right now. You know, so nah, I mean that's his thing. So of course you're not gonna beat the young guy who who got his millions doing this very thing. Speaking of unbeatable, a lot of people felt that the Woodley fight lost a little interest because it happened already and people were excited about him fighting Tommy Fury. That's the fight that people want to see. I don't know. I don't know too many people in America that know who Tommy Fury is, to be honest with you. So, in my opinion, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really sold on that narrative, Barack. I know people, I know most people would know Woodley before Tommy Fury here in America. That's my opinion. Now, mm -hmm. but is there interest uh, as far as Jake and who he's going to fight next. Do you think it should be Tommy Fury? Is that the next guy? I think so. I mean, it might not be the next guy, but I think so. I think um, I was one of those people, because I'm speaking on behalf of the boxing community. The boxing community been saying they wanted to see him fight a boxer. Now, I understand um, he, he's just starting in the game. Give him some leeway. I grade him according to a curve, you know? But now I was like, okay, now I want to see you fight a boxer. And you picked another boxer who is kind of like at your level you know Tommy Fury and I was excited about that you know so I'd like to see them run that once Tommy gets better I like to see them run that and that would be great now of course when you listen to Jake Paul what he's been saying recently he's saying he wants to take a vacation so he can concentrate on that Amanda Serrano Katie Taylor fight and also he's really only naming MMA guys still so I don't even know if we're gonna get Tommy Fury I don't know. I mean, I think that there's a there's an agenda behind that. I mean, a lot of people know these MMA fighters that he's naming. He's already went back and forth with these guys like Jorge Masvidal and Conor McGregor on social media. So I think those fights make the most sense. And maybe there's some influence from Showtime. But hey, we want to we want you to continue to fight these MMA fighters and these crossover fights. Who knows? 
I, I definitely want to see him uh, against, I guess, a boxer. But I don't want to go too deep into that because we all we all don't know what is a boxer. I'm okay with him fighting a guy with a losing record just to get that over with, so people can't say, "Hey, he hasn't fought a boxer yet." So just pick a boxer. Anybody that's a professional boxer who's never fought in a cage before, Jake, just please fight one of these guys so you can shut the whole industry up when it comes to that fighter boxer. You are a real big Jake Paul fan. No, you know, no. I I'm understand not, no, 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 his plight, no, 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 listen to but this But I though, also quick. understand right, if you're going to say it's things like... It's not that like, I'm a Jake Paul fan. If you're going to say things like boxing is... I'm putting boxing on my back, then you're going to have to understand that we're going to talk about you not fighting boxers. And I agree. Just, I agree with you, Barack. But but when I, when I say that and, and I get animated, it's not because I'm an advocate for Jake Paul. It's just I get upset and frustrated when these so-called fight fans say that out loud and casual say that out loud when they don't really notice, you know, just the science behind what's a professional boxer. It's just frustrating to me. And they don't think about all of these stars in the sport and who they fought early on in their career. All right, more on this story. Just go to the Zone News. They'll take care of you. They got it covered. We're going to talk to a guy who actually worked the Jake Paul Woodley fight for Showtime, Ariel Hawani. Welcome to the show, bro. Oh, thank you, guys. <laughs> I'm a big fan. I love what you guys do. It's about time you had the biggest name in combat sports on your program. I understand Max Kellerman wasn't available, so you called upon me. So thank you very much for that. No, you was like it. number 10, but that's okay. Uh, okay, all right, all right. All right. <laughs> guys, Fair we enough. didn't need them anyway. Listen, it's a pleasure to have you. Look, last time I saw you, I was in Tampa. You know, you, you, were, you were working for Showtime. You didn't say hello? No, you were too busy. You had like bodyguards around you. You know, yeah, it was a little right. small fry on the side. But nevertheless, you did, first off, you did a great job, especially with that sit down with both those guys. Um, speaking of Jake Paul, I I, I want to I want your take on his performance of the fight after there was a lot said about the fight was boring into that point. Then people were saying that it will you know Woodley took a dive. But when you sat down and watched the fight, what was your assessment afterwards? Okay, well. I'll say I think the dive stuff is complete nonsense, oh, right? Nonsense. I mean, come on, look at that punch. If anyone yeah. thinks that that was scripted or fake or whatever, I mean, you've completely lost your minds. Um, I didn't see a ton of improvement since August. And I think, you know, same opponent. So it's the same, you know, obviously Woodley took the fight on two weeks notice. So how much is gonna change on his end? So I kind of suspected that the fight would play out relatively the same. I said beforehand that I thought Jake should be the favorite and then I thought you know he was the one who had the best chance of winning and then I thought there was a chance actually that he would stop Woodley if only because Woodley took the fight on short notice I knew he was filming some stuff he wasn't really in a full training camp and obviously Jake was um, and so I'm not going to be too harsh on Jake again I think we need to we need to understand and I know you guys do he creates a lot of buzz he creates a lot of hype and headlines and stuff like that but he's still just four five and oh right and when you compare every other great boxer over you know the last hundred years when you're four five and oh you're at a certain level and yes i know he draws more attention than your typical four five and oh boxer but uh he's just that he's a guy with no amateur background who's just going out there and creating a lot of you know buzz for himself so my expectations are relatively high i think the the fight was solid i thought woodley was actually looking better than he did and more aggressive than he was in the first fight in the early portion and then you got the knockout that you know was heard around the world and uh it was i think a godsend for jake because had he won via decision again people would have been like all right whatever we're not into this now i think it made him even more popular based on the numbers i've been vocal about dana white and how he handles the ufc and the fighters and fighter pay why is it that fighters don't get together and make a real statement. Obviously, Dana White and the UFC can't continue without the UFC fighters participating. Is it that difficult to, I mean, are they that scared to say, okay, man, this is my bread and butter. I don't wanna F, I, if one guy says that, it's one thing. But if, if they move as a unit, they have, they have to be, there has to be some reaction from Dana White and the UFC to start paying these guys more. Well, it's a fantastic point, and it's a point that we in the MMA media have brought up over the years. It's like, hey, we feel like we're talking about this stuff more than you guys are. Now, it's easier for us to talk about it because we don't work for the UFC, right? So there are no repercussions really there. Um, I can understand why someone who is under contract with UFC wouldn't be as vocal or willing to speak about it. I can assure you, 
Every UFC fighter is reading what Jake Paul is saying about fighter pay and everyone agrees with him. They just can't really talk about it. And so what happens is you basically have like four tiers of UFC fighter, right? You have the ones who are just coming in to the UFC and they're making 12 and 12 and they're definitely not going to rock the boat, right? I mean, those guys are just happy to be there. They just got signed. Then you got the guys who have graduated from that point and they're like, oh, I'm about to become a contender. So I don't want to rock the boat now because I just had to scratch and claw my way. Then you got the guys who are the contenders who are like, oh my gosh, like it's about to come, right? It's about to come. I'm not going to rock the boat. And then you have the top 1% who have made it and are so far removed from everyone else. They're like, look, I just had to bust my for 10 years, I'm definitely not gonna rock the boat. And so at the end of the day, wow. the only time you ever get anyone quote unquote rocking the boat is when they're truly upset with the UFC. And then what happens is they get a deal, they cut a deal, they're happy. And then all that talk about fighter pay percentages, it, it all goes away, right? right? And so yes, you're right. If there was a pay-per-view on Saturday night and everyone just stayed in the hotel, things might change, but no one wants to rock the boat. There aren't a lot of other options out there. It's not like, you know, other sports leagues where there's other teams. If you piss off the UFC, you're gonna be in a tough spot in your career. And that's just the way it is. I would love to see, you know, it's funny that we're talking right now. They just came out that the, uh, the pay-per-view price has gone up now. Yes. It just came out now to $74.99. And so everything is up in the sport. Pay-per-view prices, sponsorship is up. Gates are up, pay-per-view buys up, raid, everything is up. The UFC just said themselves, they have their best year ever. And so my question is, why isn't the fighter pay going up? Why isn't their piece of the pie going up? If everything else is going up, shouldn't that go up as well? Why doesn't it? That's the only question I'm asking. Right, with inflation, salaries should go up, you, you would hope, you know what I mean? But listen, if everybody's aware of what Dana, uh, rather what, what Jake Paul is saying about, you know, going back and forth with Dana White, then do they really take him seriously with his wager? Do they really think he's really gonna do something like that? The fighters or the UFC? I'm talking about the, the fighters of the UFC. Do they th take him seriously? For the most part. I mean, it's obviously hard to speak on behalf of 500 people, but mm -hmm. for the most part, they, they, they are definitely hearing and reading what he's saying. Mm -hmm. They're all in agreement. I'd say a lot of them question his motives. They are wondering, right. do you really want to, you know, bring change are you really passionate about this or do you know that this is the hot button issue that is going to f off dana white who's your latest foil right because make no mistake about it what jake paul and his team have done over the past year which has basically been like let's go after the world of mma right over here it's been a great storyline for them it's been a great gimmick it has been very profitable and at the top of that mountain is someone like dana white like it's amazing to me jake paul's a boxer he's fighting mma fighters in the world of boxing mm -hmm. he has shown no real interest of going to MMA and yet he is an MMA story like I look at boxing media very <laughs> yes. few and let me add to that he hasn't fought a boxer and he's the one of the biggest boxing stories you know which yeah, is but that, that doesn't necessarily mean that he, he's not genuine in his approach I mean it well, can no, be I'm, a not story. I'm not saying no, that I'm not saying that I'm saying the fighters saying question that. it well, the fighters no, I question you, it right, I, I question it too because look okay he's saying I'm gonna quit boxing okay but didn't you just sign a Showtime deal well what the Showtime deal is up it's up do you think he would actually quit boxing when he has this potential to make all of this money? No, of course not. I mean, this That's is part I'm of the saying. tit for tat. This is part yeah. of the tit for tat, right? I think that, you know, Dana called him out, he's calling him out, and then he's responding back and forth. The thing that Dana needs to realize, with all due respect, Dana's 52, Jake, I think, is 24. Jake lives on the internet. Jake can play this game all day. He's got a, a team <laughs> of kids who, look, look at Dana's video and look at Jake's video. It's all, yeah, like, yeah. edited and all that stuff. Like. This is his wheelhouse, man. It's not you're, you're, like you're not going to win this battle with him. If I were Dan, I would just ignore the guy and just let him be. Honestly, if it wasn't for maybe the people around Jake, you know, Jake's manager used to work for the UFC as as the CFO. He wasn't the accountant of the UFC. He was the CFO. He was part of the, the group that, you know, helped sell the UFC uh, for $4.025 billion to Endeavor. Nikisa Badarian, very smart guy. If he wasn't involved, I actually wouldn't be surprised if Dana would try to co-promote with Jake because Dana loves people like Jake. But I think it's a little too personal with the people that Jake has involved. Yeah. Now, now speaking of, of Jake Paul and Showtime, what are the actual pay-per-view numbers for the Woodley Jake Paul fight, the second one? Honestly, and I, like, who the hell am I? I, I don't know. Um, I saw the reports. I don't think that the actual number that's been reported is accurate. I wouldn't be surprised if it was less than the Woodley fight, if only, and that was my prediction. Like you look at little metrics like, uh, you know, the YouTube numbers, right? Like when we did that face-to-face, -face, we did one back in August in Cleveland, 
and it did something like 4 million views on YouTube. And the second one did something like 2 million views. And so it just seemed like the interest was a little bit different. Also, uh, August, you know, football hadn't started, uh, you know, college football, NFL, like these things matter. And so there's mm -hmm. less competition. I thought that was a good date that they chose back in August. This time, more competition. So I wouldn't be surprised if the, the number at the end is lower. But honest to God, I do not know what that number is. I'm just a guy who comes in and holds a microphone and leaves. I'm, I'm not really on the inside. You <laughs> and, need... and picks up a paycheck on, on the way out. <laughs> oh, absolutely. But you need like, yeah, but what, they, they don't cut me in on the numbers. You think I get a piece of that pie? I wish I got a piece of that pie. Well, listen, you know, Dana, Dana's argument, though, is kind of dead in the water now. We talked about this earlier. The, they were tested, obviously, Jake Paul and Woodley, uh, and both guys came up negative for any banned substance for their last fight. So where's, where's the, you know, him saying that he you should test for you know for steroids and so on and so forth i mean that argument is done now because he's tested negative well you know as you know there are many ways to get around tests these days and some uh, right. states are a lot less thorough than others i'm just saying like of, like anyone can say i mean even the ufc has a deal with usada and it's actually like a, a pretty strict uh drug testing regimen like even i mean the smartest guys know how to get around that there's things called cycling and all that stuff so i i think dana is trying well, Dana has tried to do two things towards Jake over the past year. One, discredit the wins, right? After the Ben Askren win, he was like, eh, it seemed a little comme ci, comme ça. And now, like, just discredit his skills um, and talk about, like, oh, you're on steroids. That's why you're knocking out guys like Tyron mm -hmm. Woodley. Again, this is just two alpha males going toe-to-toe -to -toe and everyone's watching. I like the fact, like, the, the personal insults I could do without, the fact that sincere or not the the hill that right now jake is choosing to die on is fighter pay health care all this stuff that's great because that's stuff that people like myself have been talking about for years and the mm -hmm. fact that it's getting talked about on shows like yours outside of the mma world in the in the mainstream sports world general sports yeah. fan like that's great that's 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 good for the sport um whether it actually changes anything you know remains to be seen yeah, I think he doesn't want to actually re retire. He doesn't want him to take that uh, wager, but he does want to bring awareness. I do believe he wants to bring awareness and help out, you know. But let's talk about another uh, fight, a crossover fight, and that's Francis Ngannou versus Tyson Fury. I see Tyson Fury uh, said recently, he said, hey, let's do boxing rules with uh, your UFC gloves, which is either four ounces or two ounces. I was four totally ounces. with two ounces. No, and four ounces. Well, Clarissa Shields told me she weighed hers and they were two ounces, but four ounces together. Interesting. I mean, she fights for a non-UFC promotion, PFL, but I've never heard that they were two ounces. I don't know. Right. You that know, would not, be not, crazy if they were two ounces. Two ounces, pretty much like bare knuckles. Especially heavyweights. Exactly. So yeah. do you think that Ngano was just chasing a check or he, he really has a shot at beating Tyson Fury? Of course. <laughs> well, it's. I mean, yes. Uh, so you have to understand the Francis Ngano situation is one of the most interesting situations in the sport right now because he's defending his title on January 22nd yes. against his former teammate, Surreal Ghan. If Francis loses that fight, so Francis and the UFC have been butting heads a lot. He's not happy with his contract and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. If Francis loses, he actually becomes a free agent. If yeah. Francis wins, according to him and his team, by the end of 2022, he'll be a free agent, whether or not he has the title. No champion has ever been able to leave the UFC as champion. There's this thing called the Champions Clause that keeps you around, but they're saying that their term will be up by the end of 2022, which is absolutely fascinating. Now, Francis right. has talked in the past that he really wants to box. In fact, the first sport that he fell in love with was boxing, and then someone kind of, you know, convinced him to go down the MMA path, and it's worked out to a certain degree. So I'm not surprised to see him go back and forth. I'm actually a little bit more surprised to see Tyson engage because there's some, you know, relatively big fights out there for him. But honestly, if Francis re-signs with the UFC, you know, they're with ESPN. Top rank is with ESPN. I wouldn't be surprised if ESPN tries to make this fight. Like, what, what, what fight draws more eyeballs? Like, let's say... Let's say Tyson beats, well, I don't even know if he'll get Usyk, but let's just say in a perfect world, we all want to see that fight. He beats Usyk. And then how many other guys are there out there for him that are like Dillian White, maybe? You know, like how many guys would be bigger than a Francis Ngannou super fight, UFC champion versus boxing champion? It would be, you know, pretty historic stuff. So I actually wouldn't be surprised if ESPN well, it may not would be, be competitive, though. It might just be a big fight, well, but it may not be that yeah. competitive. I mean, Tyson is incredible. I, 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 yeah. I will always favor the boxer in the boxing match and the MMA fighter in the MMA match, right? Like if Tyson went to MMA, I would favor uh, Francis. If Francis goes to boxing, I favor Tyson. Although I will say about the MMA fight, like 
Francis isn't taking Tyson down. Like he's not gonna shoot on him. So then it just becomes a boxing match with four ounce gloves and we find out, like that would be fascinating. I give Tyson a lot of props for even suggesting that. Man, I would watch it. And anyone who says they wouldn't watch it is a liar as well. I agree. But we have to see what happens on January 22nd first because that's Francis's next fight. Right, and, and we also heard, uh, had some reports that he was knocked down in sparring by Francis. By Don. Yes. Well, you know, they trained together back in the day. I never, you know, as you guys know, like these these reports about like who knocked down who and who got the better of who in sparring, yeah. it's like a lot of ego stuff. They haven't trained together in probably like two, three years now at this point, which actually says a lot about Gan because Gan has only been fighting for three and a half years. So like he was just training with him in the infancy of his career. Wow. This is an amazing fight, by the way. Like if you're not doing anything on January 22nd, mm -hmm. it's an incredible heavyweight title fight. And the way like Francis should be a much bigger star. The guy is like the closest thing that we've ever had to Mike Tyson in the UFC heavyweight division, like true one punch knockout power. And because of his issues with the UFC, they haven't been really promoting him as much as they probably should. Um, so if he wins on January 22nd against his former teammate and friend, uh, hopefully, you know, he'll get a lot of money and he'll be a lot more popular. Uh, before you get out of here, uh, I want you to predict, well, well, give me your opinion on a UFC fighter that can actually compete with Jake Paul or maybe even beat him. If you had to pick one guy. Man. In the boxing ring, obviously. Yeah. Well, there's a lot, you know, I want to go realistic. You know, there's been some talk of Anderson Silva. You mm. guys saw Anderson Silva. He was like one of Hell the few yeah. MMA guys who went over and beat Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. That was super impressive yeah. to me to do that. Yes, and I was. know Julio is not the same Julio as he once was. And I know he didn't maybe like live up to his potential, but still to do that was pretty damn incredible. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would be down to see Anderson versus Jake. The problem is I think, I actually think, you know, Anderson has a very good chance in that fight. Anderson's a really good striker. Yeah. Um, I don't think people would give Jake his due if he beat Anderson because he's 45, I believe, off the top of my head. So right. I think people want to see someone younger. The biggest MMA versus Jake Paul fight to be made right now, in my opinion, is Nathan Diaz. Uh, Nathan has one fight left on his contract, and he's trying to get that fight so that he can explore what else is out there. That would be a huge fight, and the build would be massive. And oh, by the way, there's a guy named Conor McGregor with just two fights left on his contract. And I think, you guys tell me if you think I'm crazy, the biggest fight to be made in combat sports right now, whether people like it or hate it, I mean, I think Conor versus Jake Paul does well over 2 million buys. Uh, of course. And, and Conor might be about 190 pounds right about now. Yeah, that's the thing. Connor, uh, to your point, is like a 155 and has fought at 170. Jake is much bigger than him, but according to his Instagram and his pictures, the guy is looking swole, so maybe it won't be as big of a... Uh, maybe a height advantage, but not so much a size advantage. Right. Now, I'll be tuned into that one if it ever happens. Listen, Ariel, it's been a pleasure chopping up with you. Thanks for taking the time. We'll talk soon. Yeah, my pleasure, guys, and I can't wait. I hope we get to see Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano. Ooh. I'm assuming that will be on DAZN. That, to me, is my fight to see in 2022. If I have one wish for boxing, I want to see Katie Taylor, Amanda Serrano, Madison Square Garden, Puerto Rico versus Ireland, the biggest fight in women's wow. boxing history. Sign me up. I'll be there in the front row. I can't, I think that would be an incredible thing for women's boxing and for the sport in general. So I hope that we get to see it. And if it's on zone, that would be great. Yes, it's going to happen for sure. Take it easy. Ariel Thanks, one. guys. All right, brother. Take care. Before we get out of here, uh, two major fights seem to be off. First, Callum Johnson is reportedly out of his scheduled WBO title fight with Joe Smith Jr. Next weekend due to COVID. Oh, an another surprise. Also, our friend Oscar De La Hoya tweeted out yesterday that Isak Cruz apparently turned down a lucrative offer to face Ryan Garcia. Wow. Now, you know there's always variables in that. And when you tweet something like that, there's only one thing for us to think. He offered you more money. Why didn't you fight? Why are you ducking or whatever? Who knows what to think? And Joe Smith Jr., all right, his last opponent got COVID, then he got COVID, and now his new opponent got COVID. Uh, he can't catch a break. Man, he can't catch a break, man. I, I, I'm going to be praying for our guy Joe Smith that his next outing he actually gets a chance to fight and pick up a check, man. This is the livelihood of these fighters, man. They need to get paid. So COVID is messing up everybody's money. Not How about just we pray for ours. Callum Johnson, too, to get a little better? <laughs> <laughs> that, too. We're going to... Hopefully he has a speedy recovery, no doubt about that. But as far as Oscar Del Hoya, you're right. Uh, there, there's always... 
the other parts of the story, but that's cut and dry right there. We offered you more money than you've made with Tech and you turn it down. We need to talk to that team and that side, the Isaac Cruz to get, uh, side to get to the bottom of this because I want to know. I started to look forward to that fight, Barack. Ryan was ready. Ryan was coming at him. He showed a great performance against Tank, even in losing. I was excited for that, but looks like it's not going to happen. But that's our show for today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Peace and love. Stay safe. We'll see you on Monday.